Today, I'm gonna be Pokemon Emerald with only a Mawile. As a kid, when I first ran into this freaky steel type, I was immediately in love. Like, this is one of my favorite Generation 3 designs. After spending way too long catching it in Granite Cave, I put it on my team and then quickly realized that, uh, Mawile is not very good. Of course, it's the version exclusive counterpart to Sableye. It has 50 HP and speed, and then it has 85 attack and defense, with only 55 special attack and special defense. Now, if you didn't already know, in Generation 3, the stat that a move uses to calculate damage is based on that move's type. So for example, moves that have the Ghost, Normal, or Steel type are physical moves, whereas moves that are, say, the Dark type are special. And for Mawile, this is a problem. Because if we look at its move pool, yes, it starts with Astonish, which is astonishingly bad to start with, and I will explain why in a second. But then after that, it learns Bite, which is a special move, and Mawile does not have particularly good special attack. And because it doesn't learn very many TMs or HMs, it's going to take all the way until level 21 until I learn Vice Grip that I actually get access to a useful physical move. And I also think it's worth noting that through level up, the only steel type move that Mawile learns is Iron Defense. As a kid, I thought this thing was also a ghost dark type, just like Sableye. After all, its learn set really suggests that. So you can imagine my confusion whenever I attacked it and it just took like no damage from every attack. I'm like, what is this thing? It's so frustrating. Anyways, at least the limited TMs that Mawile learns are useful. It gets access to Hidden Power, Sunny Day, Ice Beam, Solar Beam, Return, Brick Break, Flamethrower, Sludge Bomb, Fire Blast, Rock Tomb, Secret Power, and Rest. Because it's a Mono Steel type, I think I should go over this thing's weaknesses and resistances. It has weaknesses to Fighting, Ground, and Fire, so two physical types and one special type. It has resistances to normal, flying, rock, bug, grass, psychic, ice, dark, and dragon. Remember that in Generation 3, the fairy type hasn't been introduced yet, so Mawile is just a mono steel type. Now my rules for my challenge are that I can only use my starter in battle, no items in battle except held items, no glitches or exploits, and no using the TM for double team until my Pokemon is level 100. This allows me to modify my starter, giving it whatever nature, ability, and DVs that I want. And I really had to think about the nature for Mawile, because I wasn't sure what I wanted. Obviously, if you're using this thing in competitive battles, it would make sense to give it an adamant nature to boost its attack and lower its special attack. However, here this is kind of a double-edged sword, because I'm going to be using mostly special moves throughout the early game in the playthrough. As a result, I decided to go with a neutral nature because I didn't want to give up any speed, after all that hasn't done well for me in the past. And I also didn't want to lower like my special defense, after all I don't want to get hit by Flannery's fire types for even more damage. Also Mawile has two abilities, either Intimidate or Hypercutter, and in this case since I'm doing a solo challenge and I won't be switching in and out with it, I think Hypercutter just makes way more sense. Okay, so I'm off onto my adventure onto Route 102. And there's this guy with a Poochiana here. By the way, I've played some Psychic types recently and he's been really annoying. Oh, I forgot to heal, so I only have one PP of Astonish. And yeah, I guess I'm going to have to spam out fake tears to win here. At least Mawile's the Steel type, so it should resist Poochiana's attacks. However, in this case, it sets up with Howl. And uh, yeah, that's my first reset right away. However, that's not going to happen if I'm healed for this fight. I really need to get Serena to draw art for this guy, because his Poochiana is like the worst thing ever. It's like giving so many Pokemon one reset right at the start. I make it to Petalburg Town, help Wally catch his Ralts, and then I head out onto the beach where I fight this guy. And now it's time to talk about why starting with Astonish is so bad. It's because so many trainers, especially in the early game, have normal type Pokemon. And yeah, I just can't do anything to this Zigzagoon. So I guess that's my second reset, and you'll actually notice here that I did save before that fight. That's because I wasn't sure if he had a Zigzagoon, I wanted to prepare just in case he did, and I was going to try and skip him, but you know, he's like running around, so I miscalculated and had to fight him. Because this trainer also has a Zigzagoon, I'm going to need to skip her with the bag trick. I just have to open up my inventory, close it, and then time the inputs perfectly so that I can walk by her before she turns and looks in my direction. In Generation 3, if you try to run by these trainers, they always turn and catch you. So this has to be done without holding the B button down too long so that your character doesn't start to run. Now there's another Poochiana in the forest, and because it resists ghost type moves, I'm gonna do some training here until I hit level 11 and get bite. After all, then I won't have to be so careful to skip all the trainers with normal type Pokemon. And while Poochiana does resist this move as well, at least I won't have to be so careful and skip all the trainers with normal types. 
This training is pretty slow because I have to defeat Puchianas, which take about four turns to knock out. Also, occasionally Talo show up, and they are normal flying types, so yeah, I can't knock them out, and I just have to run away, wasting even more time. Finally, though, just after the 10 minute mark, Mawile levels up to level 11 and learns Bite. Alright, I'm really ready to proceed with this playthrough. I defeat the Aqua Grunt, and then I try to prepare for the playthrough by going into the Berry Hut, and I talk to this lady, she gives you a random berry. I'm always hoping for the Person Berry here, because you can't access them until quite late into the game, and if you get one here, you can use it against Maxi on the top of Mount Chimney. Now because I can actually damage normal types, I'm going to fight all the trainers between here and Roxanne. After all, in Emerald version, because of the change to effort values, in these games it just makes a lot more sense to fight all of the trainers in the early game, and I continue doing this in Roxanne's gym. I was talking about how Bite is not a particularly good move for Mawile, but in this case, in the gym, it's actually useful because it's a special move, and the Geodudes have trashed special defense. Still, I want to be as safe as possible, so I go to Route 116 and defeat all the trainers here as well, before I'm finally ready to face Roxanne. Okay, let's see how this is gonna go. She leads with Geodude. I go for Bite, it does more than half, causes a flinch, and I knock it out on the next turn. Okay, so that was the perfect scenario for me. Her next Geodude comes out, I hit it with Bite, it goes for Defense Curl, and then I knock it out. So I'm not doing quite enough damage to put it into Potion range, which is actually an advantage for me. However, that really isn't the case against the Nose Pass, because it has decent special defense. As a result, it's going to heal a lot, but I'm also going to cause it to flinch a decent number of times, and when it hits Mawile, it's doing like almost no damage. So while things did slow down a lot, I'm pretty much guaranteed this victory. So Mawile has defeated Roxanne, and by doing that it's earned itself the Stone Badge, which gives a 10% boost to my attack stat, which I really wish could be useful, but Bite is just going to continue being better, especially because it has the chance to flinch. I also didn't really note at the beginning of the game, but like, why doesn't this thing learn Iron Tail? Like, I guess it's like head thing, like the Venus flytrap or whatever it is on its head. I guess that could be like a tail and you could hit people with it, but like, I'm really frustrated that this thing doesn't learn a damage dealing steel type move. Okay, let's proceed. I shouldn't complain too much. However, lucky enough for me, I won't have to continue using Bite all the time because Mawile can learn Rock Tomb. The only downside to this move is that it has 80% accuracy. So it's going to miss one out of five times. Like, ah, uh, every Rock move just has the worst accuracy. Of course, I missed my first attack against this Poochiana. It goes for Sand Attack, lowering my accuracy even more. I miss my next attack. It goes for another sand attack. Ah, and finally when Rock Tomb hits, Puchiana of course survives. So maybe Bite still is better. I fight Brendan south of Rustboro City because this fight's basically free experience. At this point, I'm overleveled and his team isn't particularly strong here. I catch myself a few HM mules, Zigzagoon for Cut and Rock Smash, Wingull for Fly, and then Meryl for like everything else. Next, I'm on a boat, which is fun. Then I grab the Silk Scarf for style. After that, I catch Magikarp for the memes. And then I deliver this letter to Steven, who has grayer hair than my dad. So now, let's see if I can beat Brawly. Now in the past with Pokemon like Absol, I have definitely tried this fight too soon, and while Mawile does take super effective damage from fighting type moves, I was figuring that its high defense might give it a chance here. However, Rock Tomb is basically doing no damage because the Machop resists it. It hits Seismic Toss doing fixed damage to me, okay that's not great. I go for Fake Tears to lower Machop's special defense, it hits a big Karate Chop causing my Orin Berry to activate. After that I go for Bite which is a special move, and yeah it's not doing very much. So this is not going to be possible at this level. The nice thing about this though is that you can skip Brawly until quite late in the game. You have to defeat him before you fight Norman, but until then you can just proceed with the playthrough as long as you've delivered the letter to Steven. So I head to Slateport City to continue my adventure. Because I caught myself a Zigzagoon, I can pick up the rare candy in the Trickmaster's house. He spins off into the ceiling, and then I fight some additional trainers for experience. After all, the next battle with Brendan is going to be significantly harder than the previous two. He leads with Wingull, and by this point I have finally learned Vice Grip. Instead of gambling with Rock Tomb's accuracy, I just use Vice Grip and knock the Wingull out in one hit. Next is Combuskin. Okay, I really want to two-hit this thing. Unfortunately though, Vice Grip does just under half. Combuskin sets up Focus Energy. My next Vice Grip doesn't get the KO, and as a result, the Chicken gets a critical hit with Ember knocking Mawile out in a single hit. Okay, that wasn't good. 
By the way, in Generation 3, using Focus Energy increases the user's critical hit ratio by two stages. I think it's not a very well known fact that this actually has stage modifiers. And in Generation 3, having plus 2 gives the Pokemon a 25% chance to score a critical hit. So that is significantly better than the base critical hit rate, which is 6.25%. Here's the thing though, I just don't think it's going to get the critical hit in the next fight. In this case it doesn't, Mawel survives with half health, and I knock his ace out. All that's left is Lombre, and this thing's really weak, so I knock it out. And with that, I'm moving on to Mawville City. It was actually really hard to say that. I kept saying Mawile City. Ugh. Anyways, here I have to face Wally, and uh, yeah, I have feint attack, so I knock the Ralts out in one hit. At this point in most playthroughs, it makes sense to spend some time training. After all, Watson is usually very challenging to defeat. I can't believe they gave him a better team in Emerald than he has in Ruby and Sapphire. Like, the Magneton was strong enough, why'd they have to give him a Manectric as well? To prepare for this battle, I clear out all of the adjacent routes, and this takes Mawile all the way up to level 33. I also pick up the Black Glasses to boost Faint Attack or Bites damage, just in case. And with that, I'm ready to fight Watson. He leads with Voltorb. I go for Vice Grip on it, and it doesn't knock it out. Alright, I take some damage, Watson uses a Super Potion which is actually pretty good because then he won't use it on the Magneton. After that, I knock the Pokeball out, and next is Electrike. In this case though, Vice Grip gets the one hit. However, that activates Static Paralyzing Mawile, so it eats its Cherry Berry. That's not a great position to be in going into the fight against Magneton, because I'm pretty sure this thing always uses Thunder Wave on the first turn. I go for Faint Attack first, it does very little damage because Steel types resist Dark type moves in this generation. It paralyzes me with Thunder Wave, and from there things spiral out of control and Mawile gets a reset. So it makes sense to do more training, after all, I was doing that fight at level 33. If I can level up three more times to level 36, I will learn a more powerful dark type move in the form of Crunch. While this is a special move, it does have a 20% chance to lower the target's special defense. So will this be what I need to defeat Watson? Well, let's find out. I go for Crunch on the Voltorb and uh, it just barely survives. I guess that's okay, because then he'll use a Super Potion here and I knock it out over the next two turns. Electrike is still a one hit, and now it's time for the Magneton. At least I've preserved my Cherry Berry to this point. I go for Crunch, get a huge critical hit, taking it under half, and then it uses Thunder Wave. Mawile consumes its Cherry Berry, and then I go for Crunch again, taking my opponent to red. Magneton uses Thunder Wave, paralyzing me, and Watson uses a Super Potion, which nearly fully heals. However, at this point, I'm just putting out enough damage, so I am able to take the Magneton out. Okay, time for the Manectric. Unfortunately though, before the Magneton went down, it did confuse me, so I get hit by Shockwave, and then Mawile hits itself. Manectric goes for Howl, raising its attack. Crunch does what looks like less than half. Mawile takes a lot of damage from Shockwave, surviving with only 8 hit points. It snaps out of confusion, but it doesn't move because of Paralysis, and as a result, Watson knocks it out. So I tried again. This time my first critical hit against the Magneton does get a critical hit, and it also lowers its special defense. Unfortunately, this isn't enough for me to knock it out on the next turn, so Watson does use his second super potion here. And then Paralysis just like hates me. It prevents three attacks in a row, and Magneton goes for Sonic Boom, taking Mawile all the way down to six hit points before I finally strike back. But because I'm slower, this fight's over. In the next fight, Electric once again gets me with its static ability. Ah, oh, it's so annoying. I do less to the Magneton, and I do reach the Manectric, but it's just not enough and it finishes me off again. Okay, so I think it's time to change my strategy. What if I use the Black Glasses? Well, this does give me the guaranteed one hit on the Voltorb. Electric goes down, it doesn't trigger static, and then I move on to the Magneton. But once again, Paralysis really ruins everything for me. Alright, so this isn't going well. If I lose one more time, I think I should go and train up to level 38. This will be over the next damage rounding threshold and really give Mawile more punch. Maybe with that increase of damage, it can knock the Magneton out in three hits and avoid Watson using a Super Potion. However, in this fight, I get a special defense drop on the first turn, and then I knock Magneton out over the next two hits anyways, avoiding the Super Potion. Okay, so I have green health left over for the Manectric. It goes for Howl. Mawile snaps out of confusion, but Paralysis prevents an attack. It goes for Howl again. I go for Crunch. It does about half. I take a Shockwave. And then my next crunch finishes it off. So I did it. I've defeated Watson. 
and with his badge I've earned myself a 10% boost to my speed stat. After progressing through the next route and grabbing secret power, I head back to Slateport City. I'm doing this so I can visit the TM shop and pick up three copies of Hidden Power. Now I mentioned before that I allow myself to manipulate my starter's IVs. I think I said DVs earlier on because I'm so used to playing Generation 1 and 2. Sorry about that. Anyways, if you didn't already know, Hidden Power's type and its base power is determined by the Pokemon's IVs. So in this case, I've given my Mawile Hidden Power Ground. After all, I need a way to hit fire types for super effective damage. So this is going to be perfect when I get to Flannery. I take a gondola ride, there's no hiker here today. And then after that, I have a showdown with Maxi on the top of Mount Chimney. Here we can see the usefulness of Hypercutter. So many of these evil trainers have Mightyena with Intimidate, but Hypercutter prevents it from lowering my attack. At this point, I've taught Mawile's secret power, so I can use this move to knock out the Mightyena, and then I move on to the camera up. Because it's a fire type and ground doesn't resist ground, I go for hidden power and it knocks it out in a single hit. After that, I one shot the Zubat, and that's it. A really easy fight. So next is Flannery, and of all the gym leaders, she is the one that I am most worried about for Mawile. Can it get through this battle at level 40? Let's find out. Flannery leads with Nummel, and it's really good because this thing isn't good. As a result, I can one-hit it with Hidden Power Ground. After that, Mawile levels up to level 41 and gets the chance to learn Iron Defense. This is really not going to help me out, it's not a very good move, so I say no and move on to the Slugma. Once again, Hidden Power Ground, one hits, and with that, I've made it to the second last Pokémon, the Camerupt. I cross my fingers, used Hidden Power Ground, and it takes it out in one hit, so that's perfect. However, the Torkoal is the reason I'm scared for this fight, because it's going to survive. It does with just under half health, and then it uses Body Slam? I genuinely have no idea why her AI chose this move. Like, isn't Overheat just much better? It causes Paralysis in this case, and then Torkoal goes first on the next turn using Overheat, and it knocks me out. That's a really strange turn of events, and I thought that Flannery just threw, but nope, she won. One question I had was, will I always one-hit the Camerupt with Hidden Power Ground? Well, it appears so. Torkoal's next, I do even more damage to it this time, but it chooses Overheat and just one-hits Mawile. In my previous runs, it has usually been the case that the way to get through Flannery when she's causing problems is just wait until Overheat misses. And for Mawile, that seems like it's going to be the fastest path to victory. After all, the first three Pokémon go down very quickly, and then I get a chance to roll for either the Body Slam with no Paralysis or Overheat missing. I don't get it in the third fight though, so I should explain why I think this is the best choice. Because of my damage range against the Torkoal, it's going to take a very long time to level up. I'd probably need to be like level 48 or 50 to one-shot with Hidden Power Ground. Even that might not do it. Mawile doesn't have access to any TMs that would be helpful at this point. Hidden Power is the best move. And I've also equipped the Soft Sand, which I got at the beach in Slateport City. In the fourth fight though, Overheat misses, and with that I knock the Torkoal out and take the victory. Honestly, that's not the way I like to win, but in this case I think it was the right choice. I backtrack to Brawly next because I need to defeat him before I take on Norman. Because I'm so outrageously overleveled at this point, this fight is not hard at all. I one-shot all of his Pokemon with secret power. And with that, it's time for me to take on the character's dad. Let's do it. Norman leads with Spinda. For this fight, I've given Mawile the Silk Scarf to boost Secret Power's damage. It doesn't quite knock his lead out. It hits back with Psybeam, which does so little. He heals with a Hyper Potion. Secret Power paralyzes, and then I knock the Spinda out. Okay, he sends in Slacking next. So let's do this. I really should have gone for Crunch turn 1 in case it used Counter, but I used Secret Power, and I take so much damage as a result. Since it's loafing around this turn, I use Secret Power, and then on the next turn I switch to Crunch. This lowers its special defense, and it was perfect because Slacking went for Counter. It heals a little bit with a Citrus Berry, and then my next Crunch takes it to Red, and also lowers its special defense again. So because it's loafing around, I've got this. Crunch knocks it out on the next turn, and now it's time for the Vigoroth. I go for Secret Power, it does more than half, Mawile resists Slash, taking very little, and then I knock it out. So only the Linoon remains. However, it just goes for a normal move, Headbutt does very little, he uses a Hyper Potion delaying the victory a little bit, but then I knock it out with two uses of Secret Power. And with that I've earned the Balance Badge, which gives a 10% boost to my defense stat. And now I can also use Surf outside of battle, so I head to the Abandoned Ship and pick up the TM for Ice Beam. After all, Mawile can learn this, 
I don't know why, like, I don't know where it's shooting ice out of, but whatever, it's going to be useful. In the Weather Institute, I defeat the admin here. She's really not difficult at all. After that, I face Brendan. He's also really not difficult. I feel like these two fights are a nice mirror to the Jesse and James fight and then the Giovanni fight in Sylph in Generation 1. All four of these fights seem like they're rarely interesting. After helping Steven take care of the Kecleon, I stop by this small cave and pick up the TM for Sunny Day. One thing I find interesting about Mawile's learn set is the fact that it gets this fire move, also Flamethrower, and Fire Blast. It's a bit weird that a Steel type can learn these moves, but I'm not complaining. After all, I think they have the potential to be very useful against Steven. I teach Mawile Ice Beam, and with that, I'm ready to take on Winona. Alright, so Swablu is first, and this thing has Perish Song, so let's knock it out right away with Ice Beam. That's good, takes care of it. Next is Altaria, takes 4 times damage from Ice Beam, so I finish it off in 1 hit to 2. Tropius is next, same situation here. Okay, I think uh, Mawile might sweep through Winona's entire team. Well, there is a Skarmory next, obviously it survives 1 hit, does so little damage with Steel Wing, and then I finish it off on the next turn. Oh, I got a crit for good measure. All that's left is the Pelipper, and it's gonna slow things down because obviously it's gonna... Oh, it doesn't use Protect. Okay, it goes for Supersonic instead, which actually hits. Bandit uses Protect. I don't hit myself, that's nice. It goes for Protect again. Are you kidding me? At least this gave me time to snap out of confusion. After that, I finally hit it with Secret Power, and it faints. Now, I have got feedback in the past that I'm using moves like Rest on Pokemon that aren't particularly bulky, so it doesn't make very much sense. But today with Mawile, this move might actually make sense, so I grab it in Lily Cove City. Then I backtrack to Fall Arbor Town and pick up the TM for Return. After all, backtracking to this town now makes sense, because then I can immediately head to the Magma Hideout. In here, I have to face Maxi. Ah yes, the glories of Hypercutter. Funnily enough, at this level, I'm not able to one-shot all of his Pokemon, like the camera up actually survives a hidden power. Maybe that's because I'm using the Silk Scarf to boost returns damage. Either way, the fight's not particularly difficult, and I take a first attempt victory. Next, I have to face Matt in the Team Aqua hideout. Of this guy's entire outfit, I can't really comment on his shoes. After all, they're mostly hidden by his awesome relaxed fit jeans. When I was in, like, middle school playing these games, actually, I wear a lot of, like, baggy jeans and skateboard shoes. <laughs> Ah, uh, it takes me back. Anyways, this fight's also not very difficult. However, coming up next is one of the most difficult fights in the entire game, and that is the battle against Tate and Liza. Because I'm doing a solo challenge, I have to beat both of their Pokemon with one Pokemon. They lead with Claydol and Zatu, and I actually can't get into this fight unless I have two Pokemon on my team, so yeah, Mawile and Magikarp it is. Because they're Psychic-type specialists, I figured that having Crunch with the Black Glasses would be enough to take a fairly easy victory here. However, just before I start using that move, I go for Ice Beam on the Claydol. After all, I could freeze it and then avoid its first turn Earthquake. Zatu one-shots Magikarp with Psychic, and then the Claydol hits Earthquake. Ah, uh, that did almost half. Luckily, I can knock it out on the next turn, so I don't take another one. They send in Soul Rock in Claydol's place, Zatu sets up with Calm Mind, and now I need to choose which one to attack. Because Crunch is a special move, I think attacking the Soul Rock first makes sense. After all, it loves to set up Sunny Day and then use Flamethrower, despite it looking like a sun and not being a fire type. Because Zatu is able to confuse me, I hit myself, and then the Soul Rock goes for Flamethrower, and that finishes Mawile off. If I had been able to attack through that confusion, I think I would have knocked the Soul Rock out. Let's try it again. But this time I get a critical hit from Crunch and I knock the Soul Rock out in one hit. Alright, that's really great. They send in Lunatone next, I go for Crunch, does more than half. Zatu continues its setup with Calm Mind, and Lunatone follows suit. Unfortunately though, it eats a Citrus Berry, and as a result it survives my next Crunch, and puts Mawile to sleep with Hypnosis. Rather than attempting again, I think it makes sense to do a little bit of training. After all, I can clear out all the trainers on the way to Pacific Log Town, because I'll have to visit here later on. At level 55, I come back and attempt the fight again. I tested Ice Beam against the Soul Rock to see if it would do more damage, then I could roll for a freeze at the beginning of that turn, but in this case it does less damage and Mawile goes down again. That didn't really give me the info I wanted, can two Ice Beams knock out the Soul Rock? And uh, the answer is no, no they cannot. I train up to the next damage rounding threshold of level 58 and then attempt again. I really wanted Ice Beam to be able to two hit at this level, however in combination with Crunch I can take it out so I guess I can roll for a freeze every time this thing comes out. But here's the issue, even after I get by the Soul Rock, the Zatu is so set up with Calm Mind that if I knock the Lunatone out, then the Zatu can just polish me off. 
Of course, the inverse would be the case as well, because if I knock the Zatu out with a move like Return, then the Lunatone has time to attack me freely. Also, the fact that this thing has Hypnosis really makes me want to knock it out right away, because if it puts me to sleep, it's basically a death sentence. I went into the next fight adding Rest to my moveset, thinking that I could maybe heal later on in the fight if I've taken too much damage, like knock the Zatu out, heal, and then knock the Lunatone out. However, this time I get put to sleep with Hypnosis, and so Mawile goes down again. I lose one more time, and then I got the idea what if I play around sleep with a Chesto Berry? Then if I use Rest to heal, I'll wake up right away, and if I get put to sleep by Hypnosis, I'll also wake up. This is possible because Ice Beam is doing enough damage. Oh, it actually knocks the Claydol out in one hit with a crit? That's nice! I finish off the Soul Rock with two uses of Crunch, and then because the Zatu is getting set up, I try to knock it out with Return. And Mawile gets very lucky because I get another critical hit. Lunatone uses Hypnosis, my Chesto Berry saves me from the sleep, I go for Crunch doing more than half, Lunatone tries to set up Calm Mind, I just barely don't one hit on the next turn, and then many tense turns follow because they use a lot of Hyper Potions to save the Lunatone. But finally, I manage to knock it out and take the victory over Tate and Liza. Next is the storyline, and it culminates with a battle against Archie. This one is also really easy. I think I have Hyper Cutter and the Steel type to thank for that. Rayquaza comes in, saves the day, and now it's time to face Juan. I one hit the Love Disc with Return, three hit the Whisk Cash with Return because he uses a Hyper Potion. The Celio actually gets to attack, it uses Water Pulse, doing very little. Luckily I don't get confused and I knock it out on the next turn. Okay, it's time for the Crawdont, but uh, Juan saves it with a Hyper Potion so that he has none left for his ace, Kingdra. Perfect for me. It goes for one double team, but my second return hits, and with that, Mawile has defeated the gym challenge. Before I go to the league though, I want to grab the TM for Brick Break. It's a great physical move that's going to be useful immediately against Sydney and then against Glacia. Well, first I have to defeat Wally, but he's like a giant pushover. Ice Beam 1 hits the Altaria, and then he sends in Magneton. Why do the rivals in Generation 2 and in Generation 3 have Magnetons? These things are awful. Because I was using Rest against Tate and Liza, I don't have Hidden Power Ground anymore. Like, I could have taught it in the place of, say, Crunch, but I'm trying to save that move for Phoebe. And yeah, check this out. I get confused, hit myself once, it does so much damage. I hit myself again, it's still doing so much damage, that's because my defense stat is lowered. Magneton uses Thunderbolt, taking Mawile to red health. And uh, yeah, I get a return in, but that doesn't matter because it goes for another Thunderbolt and finishes me off. Oh dear. So, uh, guess where the last place I saved was? Yeah, I saved in front of Juan because I did not think that I needed to save for Wally. I am going to root in a save in front of Wally in every playthrough from here on out. So this would have been really bad if Juan was difficult, but uh, he isn't. I just defeat him immediately again in the exact same way the second time. Alright Wally, it's time for my revenge. I saved before him this time because I don't really want to teach Hidden Power Ground, but I can give up Return for Brick Break, which is also super effective against the Magneton. If you didn't know, you can actually obtain a second Return TM in Pacific Log Town, and so I'll be able to teach it to Mawile again in the future. And Brick Break is going to be immediately useful because Sydney is the first Elite Four member. After the Magneton goes down, the rest of Wally's team is pretty easy. I two-shot the Gardevoir with Crunch, and one-shot the Rosalia with Ice Beam. So now, it's time for the League. Sydney is first, and he opens with Mightyena, which is usually awful because of Intimidate, but today I have Hyper Cutter. I go for Brick Break, and it gets the one hit. Sweet, so this thing doesn't even have a chance to use Sand Attack on me. Next is Crawdont. Brick Break is obviously super effective. It doesn't knock it out, but the thing just tries to set up Swords Dance. Sydney uses a full restore, and then I knock it out over the next two turns. It's actually good in these games when you outspeed and they use a full restore to try to save their Pokemon, because it just wastes it for later on in the fight. I one hit both of his Dark Grass types and make it to the Absol. But in this case, Mawile is faster, hits Brick Break, and knocks his ace out in one hit. So with that, I've made it to Phoebe. Oh great, I, uh, I forgot the black glasses. I should really have the black glasses in this case. Well, maybe not, because it's not going to improve the number of turns I need to knock the dust clops out. Unfortunately, it confuses me, and as a result, it does a lot of damage. But at this point, the fight's basically over because the second dust clops has Earthquake and it finishes Mawile off. 
I clicked a little bit too fast and went back into the fight without the black glasses again. At least this time I knock out the first Dusclops without taking any damage. My second Crunch doesn't knock it out, which is unfortunate because it would have if I had the black glasses. Dusclops uses Earthquake. Okay, nice health. It heals with a Citrus Berry, and as a result, Phoebe doesn't use a full restore on it, so I knock it out on the next turn. Alright, I might have a chance here. I go for Crunch on the Bayonet, and it doesn't knock it out. He goes for Will-O-Wisp, Burning Mawile, and this isn't a problem because it cuts my attack, this is instead a problem because of the damage it deals to me. She heals with a full restore, and as a result, Mawile eventually goes down to the status condition damage. Alright, this time I remembered the black glasses, but then the Dusclops uses Protect twice, wasting so much PP with pressure. And uh, yeah, then it just goes for Curse, so I've lost this fight. I reset right away to save time, and now with the black glasses I can take out the second Dusclops with two hits from Crunch. So that's perfect. The Bayonet doesn't use Will-O-Wisp, I knock it out in two hits. The second one takes me under half health before I knock it out, and now it's time for the Sableye. I go for Ice Beam, just in case it freezes. Sableye uses Double Team, and then my second Ice Beam rolls better damage and knocks it out. So with that, I've made it to Glacia. Here's the thing for this fight. I think that Brick Break in combination with Rest is just going to be enough. After all, she's not going to be able to deal much damage to Mawile. I get a lucky critical hit on the first Celio. She sends in Wall Rain next. Okay, it's Surf actually does a lot of damage, but two Brick Breaks finish it off. Glalie misses Icy Wind. She heals it with a full restore, and then I knock it out with two Brick Breaks. The second Celio just uses Hail. I feel like Steel type Pokemon should maybe not take damage from Hail. I know that like cars made out of like aluminum and stuff take damage from it, but like, yeah, I can't see like a sheet of like, let's say stainless steel taking much damage. Anyways, I polish off her final Glalie and with that, I've made it all the way to Drake. And I expect him to be incredibly easy for Mawile. I go for Ice Beam right out of the gate and knock the Shell Gone out. However, here, Mawile's speed stat is finally a liability. While I have been gaining speed EVs, I'm not fast enough to move first against the Flygon, and it does so much damage with Earthquake before I finish it with Ice Beam. That's bad, because Salamence is next, and it outspeeds and uses Flamethrower finishing Mawile off. Now I wasn't sure for a moment what I should do here because I really don't like using rare candies too early on, especially because I have to defeat Steven. But in the end I decided to use 4 taking Mawile all the way up to level 70 over a damage rounding threshold. So I have a hope that these rare candies might let me outspeed the Flygon. I haven't yet developed the resources to show the enemy trainer's stats during battles, and I haven't memorized these stats myself either. So let's see, will Mawile move first with 129 speed? The answer is yes, and it knocks the Flygon out with a single hit. But the Salamence is faster, it moves first, uses Flamethrower, but I survive and knock it out despite getting burned in the process. Okay, so that isn't great because Kingdra is next. At least my Citrus Berry heals a little bit of health before I start attacking. In this case, Ice Beam is the best choice because it's neutral. It does about a third, Kingdra sets up Dragon Dance, I take damage from Burn, and because it uses Surf on the next turn, which really synergizes well with Dragon Dance, Mawile goes down. Alright, so without the Burn from the Salamence, I think I can do this. I don't get it in the next fight, so I get to move on to the Kingdra with green health and no status condition. But then the Kingdra goes for Surf and gets a critical hit, knocking Mawile out. Come on! Okay, so I'm not doing enough damage to the Kingdra, but I can teach Return in the place of Crunch. After all, Crunch is not going to be very useful anymore. And this gives me enough damage to two-shot the Kingdra and move on to the Altaria. In this case, Mawile is once again faster, I hit with four times damage from Ice Beam, and now I've made it to the champion. It's time to face Wallace. Going into this fight, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but I do have rest so I can heal in case I need to. I do half to the Whale Lord, it hits a Water Spout, which does about a third, and then I knock it out on the next turn. Whiskash is next, but this thing loves to set up Amnesia, so I just knock it out with two hits from Return. Okay, time for the Gyarados. Return does more than half, and then it uses Earthquake, which takes me down to 56 hit points. Okay, that's really not good. Because Tentacruel is part poison type, I felt like it couldn't do too much damage to me, so I decided to use Rest. But then it starts using Hydro Pump, and yeah, I sleep just too long and it knocks me out. So healing won't work there, but this fight can also play out much worse, because the Whiskash can go for Earthquake and do almost half to Mawile before the Gyarados comes out. And then it goes for Dragon Dance, which I thought might let me squeeze in one more attack, but no, it outspeeds with Earthquake and knocks Mawile out. After another loss, I was starting to get confused about winning here. I don't have nearly enough damage to level up and knock the Gyarados out in one hit. After all, I'm basically just doing half right now, and then it can set up Dragon Dance, boosting the damage from Earthquake and just knock me out. So yeah, Mawile goes down again. 
I guess I'm gonna have to use rare candies and level up more. I can use eight, taking Mawile up to level 78 over a damage rounding threshold, and hopefully this will give me the damage that I need. I get lucky in the early portions of this fight and Wallace does no damage to me before the Gyarados comes out. I was hoping here that I would survive one Dragon Dance boosted Earthquake, at least move on to the Tentacruel, but uh, no, it gets a critical hit, so Mawile goes down. And you know what truly would be the worst luck? If in the very next fight, Gyarados once again got a critical hit with Earthquake and knocked me out. Ah, are you kidding? So uh, you know what the solution was here? Dumb luck. In the next fight, Gyarados went for Dragon Dance, not once, but twice in a row for some reason. I have no idea why it did this, but it gave me the chance to use Return again and knock it out. So, I got to the Tentacruel with green health. As a result, I can attack right away, not having to use rest, and I can knock it out only taking damage from one Hydro Pump. Ludicolo's next, and Wallace didn't use all of his full restores on the Tentacruel, so he uses another one here, and I use rest here because I knew that I wouldn't survive a single hit from the Milotic. I actually got worried here that I was going to have to use rest over and over and over again, just because of how much damage the Ludicolo was dealing to me. But then it went for double team on one turn, so as soon as I wake up I use return and knock it out. Okay, it's time for Wallace's ace, Milotic. I am so worried about this. I go for return, it takes it to orange, and then it strikes back with surf. But Mawile survives on red health and finishes it on the next turn. Okay, to make that fight consistent, I probably would have had to have been a higher level. Either way, Mawile defeats the league with a time of 2 hours, 17 minutes, and 33 seconds, with 33 resets at level 78. This took 7 hours and 36 minutes of game time. But the game isn't over yet because I still have to defeat Steven Stone in Meteor Falls. To prepare for this fight, I went to the game corner to buy the TM for Flamethrower. After all, it is going to be great against all of his steel types. So let's see if I can do it. Because I used all my rare candies, I'm level 79, and my moveset is Flamethrower, Brick Break, Rest, and Hidden Power. By using Flamethrower, I can knock the Skarmory out in two hits. Okay, that's really good. And then Steven sends in Claydol. Oh no. I don't really have anything that's particularly good against this. I go for Flamethrower, it does like maybe a quarter, but it burns, so that's good. I tried Brick Break to see if it would do more, but no, it's definitely not doing more. Claydol goes for Earthquake, doing about a third to me, and then I realized that since this thing is doing so little damage, I can actually stall it out by just using Rest. Eventually it's going to faint to burn or Steven's going to use a full restore. He does the latter, but then because the burn has been healed and its attack stat isn't cut anymore, it does so much damage with its next Earthquake. As a result, I lose my first battle against the Steel Master. I tried again, this time using the Move Reminder to teach Crunch in the place of Brick Break. I also leveled up once, so I'm over the next damage rounding threshold at level 80. However, Crunch doesn't even do half to Claydol, and its Earthquake does more than half to Mawile, so this isn't the answer. I tried again because I figured that there's a 20% chance for Crunch to lower special defense, and then maybe in that situation I could knock it out on my second hit. But I don't get it in the next fight, so I decided to switch to the Black Glasses to see if this would give me the two hit. But in this case, it doesn't look like it. Oh, okay, I got the special defense drop, so that's nice. I went for Crunch again, and the Claydol survives. So even with the black glasses and a special defense drop, I was not able to two-shot it. So what's the answer here? Well, I can go to the move reminder, give him another heart scale. This guy is really doing a good business right now. Also, why does he want heart scales? Like, does he collect these things? Like, why are they good to collect? I don't really understand. Also, why does he have the power to remind your Pokemon of moves? Is he a time traveler coming back from Scarlet and Violet? Like, I don't know. Or he's coming forward in time from Legends Arceus? Anyways, I can use him to teach Mawile Iron Defense. Remember when I said this move was going to be useless? Yeah, it's going to be really useful now. So finally, after this entire playthrough, Mawile finally has a Steel-type move. But it's not going to be useful to attack with. Instead, I'll set up my defense on the Skarmory. After all, it loves to use, like, Spikes and Steel Wing, which does, like, nothing to me, especially when I'm setting up my defense stat. Also, with the Leftovers, I'll gain back a decent amount of health every turn. And as you can see in this case, while I'm setting up, I actually don't take any damage. I finish the Steel Bird off with two hits from Flamethrower and move on to the Claydol. Okay, I really just need to hope this thing doesn't get a critical hit, but even in that situation, if I'm near full health most of the fight, I should be able to heal with rest. Earthquake isn't doing very much, but because of an early special defense drop, I'm able to knock the Claydol out without taking very much damage. Actually, with the leftovers healing, I'm full health by the time I start attacking the Aggron. In this case, Flamethrower is neutral, so it makes the most sense to use this move. 
but Agron's using thunder? Why does this thing have thunder? It's actually doing decent damage to me, but I managed to take it out with Mawal surviving with just over half health. Metagross is next. I go for Flamethrower. Doesn't quite do half. It strikes back with Psychic, dealing a decent amount. Flamethrower takes it down to red health. And at this point, Steven is probably going to use a full restore. He does. And I use Rest to heal Mawile. Now I just need to be able to get through this portion of the fight without taking too much damage. But here's the problem. Steven has enough full restores to save the Metagross just long enough for it to lower my special defense with Psychic. And while I am able to take out his Ace, he still has an Armaldo next. And my special defense being lowered here is actually a liability because it's using Water Pulse, which is doing surprising damage to Mawile. Even with leftovers, I'm kind of scared of attacking when I'm at low health. I really wasn't sure if it was gonna just knock me out on the next turn. Finally, when I had decently high health left, I attacked, Flamethrower does very little, and with that I have to heal again. But this time the Armaldo gets a critical hit, and that's it for Mawile. So even with Iron Defense, this is not an easy win. In the next fight, things go even worse because the Metagross lowers my special defense right away, and as a result, it just takes me out and I don't even make it to the Armaldo. Then the Metagross lowers my special defense again before Armaldo, and this time I played a little bit more aggressively because I'm like, I have to do damage to it, I can't just heal all day, and as a result I once again lose. Then Agron gets a critical hit with Earthquake, and that knocks Mawile out. At this point I was like, okay, I'll try one more time and then I'm gonna go level up. And then in this fight, I got the luck that I needed. Against Metagross, the Flamethrower burnt it, which causes a small amount of damage to be taken before the next turn, and as a result, my second Flamethrower has enough damage to knock it out. Because of that, I've reached the Armaldo without my special defense being lowered. As a result, I can attack right away, not once, but twice, and the second hit also causes a burn. So that is perfect. I can use rest now. It's taking damage from burn, so Steven's going to use a full restore. And then when I wake up, I can go on the offensive because I'm not taking very much damage from water pulse every turn. Now, because full restores exist, this took a long time. I had to heal a lot. He healed a lot. Flamethrower's not doing very much damage to Armaldo, but eventually it does go down and it made it to Steven's last Pokemon the Cradily. Here's the thing though, it only has two attacking moves, which are Giga Drain and Ancient Power, and neither of these is very good against Mawile. So, I'm able to knock it out and finish the game. Mawile clocks in with a time of 2 hours, 40 minutes, and 11 seconds, with 41 resets at level 81. This took 8 hours and 27 minutes of game time. So how do these results compare to all the other Pokemon I've used in Pokemon Emerald? Well, Mawile is just slower than Absol through the game, and I actually think that Absol's time could be much faster because I misplayed so many times in that playthrough. Mawile was faster than Pokemon like Sceptile, Ludicolo, and Shiftry. Overall, I think I'm finding that grass types are not particularly good in this game. So today, Mawile is middle of the pack, earning itself the 6th rank. Like, subscribe, ring the Chimeco, and comment because I gotta read them all. If you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships, thank you so much. It means the world to me. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you in my next video.